and welcome to our year-end conference and social. So the flow of the day is very simple. We have a conference, a talk on Pro Primum, which will be given by Father Paolo Pirlo. And then after that, of course, everybody knows Father Paolo Pirlo, the Superior General of Santa Poli Mary Magdalene. <laughs> Provincial, okay, I don't know. okay, so provincial, okay, so anyway, then, so after that, we will have our socials, okay, so without further ado, I'd like to call Father Pirlo to open in prayer and then start the conference on Quo Primo. Let us all stand. In nome del Padre, et Fili, e Spiritus Santi. Pater Noster, che es in Cieli, santificato il nome in Tuum, advenia regnum Tuum, fiat voluntas Tua, sicut in Cielo et in Terra. Amen. Amen. Maria Sede Sapientia, Sante Pontifice Pius il Pintus, in nome del Padre, del Figlio e del Spirito Santo. So, good morning everybody. 2,000 years of history will be squeezed into 30 minutes talk. So, the issue is very simple. This Misa is called the Misa of the Vetus Ordo. The one we have been using, even this morning we use this one. This one is the Misa of the Novus Ordo. So, how does it happen in the Catholic Church that we have two Misas? And so the history began in the year 33. So as usual, when I teach, I always I don't use PowerPoints. I think I'm the last, last dinosaur not to use PowerPoint. And problem I say, PowerPoint, you lose the power, you miss the point. <laughs> so, Naximula, Sayer 33 AD. Then I go straight, 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 straight. I put here, 1570, and then I continue with my chronological line until the year 2023. So for those who don't know yet, we are in the year 2023, because what happened 2023 years ago? Of course it's joking. Jesus is just joking. You know? <laughs> so Jesus was born 2023 years ago. If you have to make a birthday cake for Jesus this Christmas, you have to put 2023 candles and then call the fireman when your house burns. So, year 33 AD, Jesus Christ during the Last Supper instituted the sacrament of the Eucharist, which is the Holy Mass. This institution was made of three parts. The first part, the scriptures. The second part, the sacrifice. The third part, communion. So during the Last Supper, first of all, Jesus preach, explain the scripture for the Old Testament, because the New Testament was not yet written. Liturgy of the Word, the scriptures. After which he took bread and wine and he offered the sacrifice. Remember, in the Catholic Church there is only one priest, Christ. One only sacrifice, Christ. One only altar, Christ. Sha'am lahat. A part of we priests are alter Christus, when you appreciate the Mass, with the eyes of the body, you see a man. 
Aber die erste Person, wir sollten sehen, Christ. Kapitel? Christus. So, the priest is alter priest. No. Kasi simula lang ang simbahan, kasi simula din ang persecution. So, for 313 years, that's why I have to write it here, it's about 313. For 313 years, the whole of Europe and North Africa and Israel was occupied by the Roman Empire, and the Roman Emperor decided to persecute and exterminate Christianity. So for 300 years, Christians were hunted down and persecuted. So how could they have churches and basilica and Catholic schools? Unthinkable. So where did they meet? in private houses and in um, catacombs. I went to Santa Crispina in a, where there was a Eucharistic miracle of Bursena, and I went down into the catacombs. They are underground cemeteries, and they used to celebrate mass over the tombs of the martyrs, because the first 300 years, all the saints were martyrs. So if this is the sarcophagus, and this is the top of the sarcophagus, with the bones of the martyrs inside, we call them relics. The priest would celebrate mass on the sarcophagus, uh, first uh, the readings, and then the offering the sacrifice, and then communion. Of course, there was no entrance procession. There was not announcement. To whom it may concern, there will be a mass to be celebrated in the catacomb of St. Callistus. No, go. The Roman soldier will immediately go there and kill everybody. So everything was secret. Can I pack a simple celebration of Banana Misa? The hill under persecution. Even the priest, they didn't go around with with black uh, cassock, or else they will be immediately identified and killed. <laughs> So for 300 years, uh, for those who read, the, who read the bravery, there is an hour, the hour of prime, with the martyrology. So all the popes, most of them, in the first 100 years, they died martyrs. Can you believe that? And when the year is 313, something very big. Constantine the Great, Constantino, Emperor Constantine, he, because of a miracle, I don't want to explain now the miracle, he decided to grant freedom to the Catholic Church. Wow! It was in Milan, the Edict of Milan, but there was a miracle. Before a battle, he saw in the sky the sign of the cross, and in Oxinio Vinces, and so uh, he decided to grant freedom to the Church. Not only to grant freedom to the Church, but to build the first churches, the first church ever built in the Catholic Church, donated by Constantine the Great, was St. John Lateran. So it built St. John Lateran, St. Peter, St. Paul in Jerusalem, St. the Holy Cross, and then a lot of other churches, big, huge churches. So, Shepherd, Malaki Ang Simbahan, Malaki Altar. But the Misa again saw them. So from that moment, there were stable altar instead of the catacombs. But we used to say the mass over the tombs of the martyrs. No problem. We take the relics from the catacombs and we put on the slab of the altar. That's why we call it altar stone with the relics of the martyrs. And then the priests, they began going around with proper clerical garment. And then the liturgical vestments became beautiful. And the chalice, and the vessels, and the missal, and everything became glorious because there was freedom. And Christians were very excited to donate gold and silver and diamond to beautify the Holy Mass. Remember, all the basilicas are built for only one purpose, the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And then music and singing and chanting, an ever ending procession that will last for 20, 30 minutes. Imagine all the service, the deacon, the subdeacon, the acolyte. 
So this was the turning point of the Catholic Church, 313, Emperor Constantine. By that time, the Mass began being more articulated. So what happened in, in 313? I don't know. First of all, it was divided. Mass of the Catechumens and Mass of the Faithful. Because 100,000 wanted to be baptized, so the church said, take a moment, take a moment. My Catechumens and uh, uh, Credo, that was among the faithful, the whole Mass. By the way, we have a Catechumen here. I don't know if it's around. He came last day. He, he was a Protestant. I think he's, if he's here, raise your hand. Okay. Are you here? Yes, long hair. No. Okay. <laughs> he fell in love with a Catholic girl. And first, he was dragged to the Mass against his will. And then, little by little, he began liking the Mass. And now he's attending the TLM. So I told him, since you're still a Catholic human, after the credo, extra on this. Please go out because you're not yet baptized. But they will be baptized this week, I think today. So I told this. I don't know if you noticed in the past Sundays, after the credo, a good looking boy man he stood up and he walked away. It's not because he got mad at me. Because he was a catechumen, not yet baptized. No. <clears throat> then they inserted the Kyrielation. They inserted the, the, the Gloria. They inserted the enjoy before the Mass. By that time, there were only two readings, Epistle and Gospel. And all the things, Alleluia, the preface, the canon, everything was finalized after the edict of Constantine. Including, imagine, the Kyrian. Kyrian. You know, there's a joke I will never forget. In the monastery of sisters, during the war, the olive oil was very expensive, like now. So the mother superior said, I will be the one to pour oil on the plates of the sisters by the time I say Kiri Eleison. So she went to the first sister, Kiri Eleison, Kiri Eleison, Kiri Eleison, just a drop, just a drop, Kiri Eleison. Pagdating sa kanyang plato, Kiri <laughs> so, in these 200 years, 213 to 500, the Mass, as we know, was already complete. What happened in the year 500? G, G, Gregory, it was the first greatest Pope who put together the Misa, as we see now. Now, the Misa of Gregory the Great was 99% like this Misa, with a big exception. What are the exceptions? The calendar of the saints. I should know. But only Pope Gregory, what about St. Francis, what about St. Dominic, what about St. Pius V, what about St. Among the Santos Santo Nati, they were not yet born. So what is changing in the Misa? That's the thing I say right away. It's not the Ordo Misa, much less the Canon Misa. The only thing that changes are the saints, the masses for the saints. What do we say? The calendar, the problem of the saints. So Panaoni, Saint Gregory, Etona. The Misa, with the exception of the calendar of the saints, was already 99% complete. Tanon, did Gregory the Great compose a new Misa? No. It's very clear in his writings. He said, it's not my intention to write a Misa, but to restore the Mass as it was in the beginning. Can you believe that? All the saints Pope never attempted to change anything in the Misa. Because they knew it's coming from, especially the canon, most probably it's coming from the apostles themselves. So Gregory said, I don't want to change, I just want to compile and remove from the Misa addition that they were not there from the very beginning. Then we go 
uh, from the year 500 uh, up to the year for, during the Middle Ages, there was a problem. Communication was very uh, difficult. So each church has its own missal, and they began adding things. For example, they began adding the saints at the communicantes. They were communicantes in communion with, and they began adding all the saints of the province of the church of the diocese. The Egypt tour. In the preface, they made preface that will last for 30 minutes. Yes, because they will include, and uh, let us pray also for Saint Isidro Labrador, and for Santa Cecilia, and for Saint Antonio. Let us pray for Saint Pagita, for Saint Tolan, for Saint Murai. <clears throat> so we reach in the year 1100. There was a saintly pope whose name I will tell you in a moment. <laughs> Urban the second. Urban the second. Ang ni Urban the second. He said, "Ang gulo naman ang mga misas na simbahan because every parish is adding things." So he started the so-called Gregorian reform. Let us restore the misa to the time of Saint Gregory the Great. Who did not invent anything, but he wanted to restore sa panahon ng mga apostoles. So we start seeing that what is written here is not the invention of a pope, but it is the liturgy of the Catholic Church from the beginning. Now, Urban II, but changes never die because people always want to change something. Even now in the Novus Ordo, in every Mass you go, the priests are very creative. In the Philippines, we became famous a couple of years ago because the people, a priest was going around with the, do you call that thing, the eh? And well, we have to be creative. The Archbishop of Palermo, he entered for the Mass with the full vestment riding a bicycle. Yes, to, to tell the people, we need to be worried of the global warming. Naga bicicleta. Naga bicicleta. You can see the YouTube. Last year, I was in Italy. A priest celebrated Mass wearing only swimming trunks in the sea. In the sea. So the youth, half naked, were in the beach. He was in the sea where a, over a inflatable salvavida. He celebrated the mass like that. How creative we priests are. So because of these <clears throat> changes, addition, deduction, multiplication, division, the Council of Trent, and now we go, 1560, Council of Trent. Now the Council of Trent decided we must restore the Roman Missa as it was at the time of St. Gregory the Great. So there was a commission, the charge commission of experts, historian, liturgists, professors, free access to the archive of the Vatican, free access to all the libraries of Rome and whatever other sources were available, with this job to restore the Roman Missa as it was at the time of Gregory the Great. This work took about 10 years, 16. By the time they finished, there was a new pope. He was a Dominican, Pius V. To give you an idea, Pius V is the same pope who made the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. He's the same pope who asked, uh, what's the saint of today, Charles Borromeo, to finish the catechism. It was the same Pope who <coughs> restored the Roman breviary, the prayer of the priest, and the prayer that the priest should pray. And <clears throat> so it was one of the greatest Popes in history. So we had here Gregory the Great, Casunod, Panius the Fig. So what happened in 1570, and now we go to the core of our uh, discussion. 
1570, it happened something very important. The issuance of a, of a document <clears throat> entitled Quo Primo. Quo means what was from the beginning. You see the point? What was from the beginning? Quo Primum. We are not here to, it was not there to invent a new missile, but simply to restore the missile as it was in the beginning. So, <clears throat> what, what, what were the changes? <clears throat> the four points of Quo Primo are the following. Restoration, canonization, dispensation, and perpetua indult. Yes, one, two, three, four. A re a restoration. It's the first point. I will not quote because I don't want to bore you, but I just make a summary. A restoration, not innovation. Pius the Fifth did not want to create a new Misa, but to restore the Misa as it was at the time of Saint Gregory the Great. So he said very clearly, we decided to entrust this work to learn, manage, etc., etc., and to restore the Misa itself in its original form as it was at the times of the Holy Fathers. Holy Father means Panon and Gregory the Great and even earlier. So restoration. Casunon. Canonization of the visa. Canonization. Canonization means from now on this is the holy canonization. The holy visa of the Catholic Church in the Latin Rite. And he said let masses not to be sung or read, I must or no mass. According to any other form, but this missa that we publish, this ordinance applies henceforth, now and forever, to all the provinces of the Christian world, including the Philippines. So we see from this document that there was a low mass and I mass. What's the difference between low mass and I mass? Virtually only the chanting and the uh, incense and the solemnity, but the words are just the same. So, restoration, canonization. Now, this is a very important thing. Dispensation, dispensation, dispensation. You know, the saints are also prudent. So he said, those missiles that are 200 years old and above, might be retained. You see the prudence of the, the wisdom of the saints, no? He said, okay, this is the only Misa. But those Misa that have been used in the Catholic Church for more than 200 years could be retained. And what are these Misa? The Ambrosian Misa from Milan, they're still using it up to now. And, <clears throat> The Ambrosian Misa, the see, most Arabic Misa, the one of Lyon, and some Misa of the religious orders, like the Dominicans, the Certusians, they are not really different from this, just slight difference from the calendar. Okay. Because I mean, yeah, 200 years old and above, you can use it. And last word, perpetual indult. Perpetual indult. Indult means permission to use a missile. I will call the words of Saint Pius the Fifth. By virtue of our apostolic authority, we, the popes, always use the pluralis majestatis. The pope cannot say I. Always we. We have decided. So if somebody speaks with the plural, it thinks either is the pope or is crazy. Because we decided to grant in perpetuity that for the chanting or reading of the Missa, low mass, high mass, 
in any church whatsoever, including the church of the seminary of the SHMI, this Misa is to be followed absolutely without any scruple of conscience or fear of penalty. <laughs> Do I look afraid of penalty? Well, judgment and may freedom lawfully be used, nor are superiors, administrators, canon, chaplain, or other secular priests or religious of whatever title obliged to celebrate the Mass otherwise than by using this Misa. We call this the permanent indulgence. And if it's a every Catholic priest in his private mass is free to use this, not by virtue of the Summorum Pontificum. The Summorum Pontificum granted permission for public masses, not by virtue of the traditionalist custodian, not by virtue because Father General told me that I can or I cannot do it. No by virtue of ordination. So any Catholic priest, in this case me or Father Michael, in private masses, we have the permission, the indulgence granted by Pius V till the end of times to use this Misa without permission whatsoever by any authority. And nobody can prohibit us from using it. Wow. And to finish, the wrath of God, by wrath of God. <laughs> now is the penalty for those who change the Misa. Eh? Now look at the penalty. Quotation. Therefore, no one who whatsoever is permitted to change without permission uh, to, uh, to change anything from this Misa. Should anyone presume to commit such an act, to add, remove, or change any word of this Misa. Now, look at the punishment. Will incur in the wrath of God, <laughs> the wrath of God of St. Peter and Paul. Now, try to look at the situation of the church before <clears throat> when everybody was using this, and now that most of People, priests are using this. But in the Philippines, in the Mashadon Alatan, I mean, not. Because in the Philippines, churches are full, seminaries are full, convents are full, there are Catholic schools full of people. So in the Philippines, in the Mashadon Alatan, it's, it has been preserved by, by God because it's Puebla Mante de Maria. But anytime I go to Europe, Ambotsa y Motabang in Cogino, oh. Sunday masses, 12 people. Catholic schools closed down. Seminaries virtually empty. The seminaries are virtually empty. Convent, Malana. Um, I always say it's easier to find a dinosaur than a priest walking in the street. And then, uh, if you see somebody dressing in white and black is not a Dominican sister, it's a penguin. Because you see, in the States, when we been in the States, those who have been in the States, in Australia, New Zealand, the Western world, did you see the churches? Did you see the seminaries, the school? Total disaster. Why? The wrath of God for those who dare to change. So with this, quo primo, no, voilà. <laughs> okay, see, never mind. Eh, quo primum perpetua in do. From this moment, nobody can change, add, or remove anything from here. Eh, fast forward, there were a few changes until finally in uh, 1962, Pope John. X, X, I, 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 John the 23rd, he issued the latest edition of the Roman Missa, which is this one. Anampaka Iba. What is new in the new edition of John the 23rd? 
But something that you will never notice because you are not a priest. But we priests, we notice it. The insertion of the name of St. Joseph in the canon. For those who do not know, Anuban canon, the most sacred part of the Mass. After the Santo, 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 Don Pedro, ding, ding, Lumo and then the priest, in a silent voice, reads the canon. That's why you will never hear the name St. Joseph, her spouse, because it's the whisper. But what John the 23rd did, he changed the canon by inserting the name of Saint Joseph. It was a big shock in the Catholic world because the canon does not go back to Pius V, does not go back to the Council of Trent or to Urban II. The canon doesn't even go back to Gregory. It goes back to the apostolic times. So by inserting the name of Joseph, it was like, what can I say? You have a dike, then you drill a small hole. Ay, nako, malit na butas, malaki, malaki in time. So anyway, this is now, what I'm holding in my hand is the 1962 Misa, which is virtually identical to the one of the Council of Trent, to the one of Gregory the Great, and it will not be changed, period. Now, footnote before I finish. Eparoto, if this is the missile, where did this missile come from? I will tell you in a short while. 1962, S.C. Sacrosan Concilium. The fathers of the Second Vatican Council in the Sacrosanctum Concilium decided that we need a new mass because the old mass in Latin. Dico na intindinoro, latinoro na mani. But let's see kung hindi maintindinoro. Angelo, translate in English. Dominus Fobisco. Lord be with you. Et con spirito tuo. And with your spirit. Noli me tangere. Touch me not. Si. <laughs> Et filibusterismo. <laughs> so, Sacrosanto Concilio was the first document of Paul VI where they opened for the creation of the Novus Ordo. So what happened in this document, for those who do not know? <clears throat> it's a document based on, yes, but, yes, but, yes, I love you, but I don't. The Bible, when you say but, means the opposite. So look what is written in the Sacrosanctum Concilium. Latin is to be preserved, but the vernacular may be used. I know. Latin is to be preserved, but English may be used. <laughs> okay. Gregorian chant must be preserved, but a new music might be used. And sacred art must be preserved, but new art must be introduced. So it's yes, but thing. So yun ang simula ng Novus Ordo. It was in 1962. That was 1965 traditional uh, trans TM. Transitional mass. Anon transitional mass. Seven point six. He instituted the Council Concilium and he said, Ganito na lang, <coughs> let us remove the prayer at the foot of the altar. Huh? Let us remove the credo. Let us remove this. Let us remove that. They remove 50% of the part of the mass of the Vetus Ordo, and they replace with something new. Until we reach in 1969, Novus Ordo. So the creation of the Novus Ordo started in 1962 and was completed in 1969. So let's make a parallel line eh, like this. So, I 
Andy Mundis, Sacro Santo in Concilio, Traditional Mass, Novus Ort. Oh. What is in common between this and this? <clears throat> Let's see. They remove the black cassock of the priest. I think I'm one of the few wearing black cassock in the SSPX when I was in Italy. <laughs> when I was in Italy, you know, riding a train, people were coming to me. And I was, <clears throat> my brother was always beside me, you know, which channel, where my brother, they were making pesto. So who's known, after the Mass, <clears throat> you, they offer you aperitivo, aperitivo. How do you say appetizer? We go to the coffee shops. There are coffee shops everywhere in Italy. Always somebody said, Oh, Padre, don not Aperitivo. Aperitivo. So I was there taking aperitivo. Yes, about 10 euro each. My brother was beside me. When my friend went to pay to the cashier, the owner of the coffee shop said, If Father is with you, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend said, But if it's free, God will not give me any reward because I don't pay. Let's go to another coffee shop. Another coffee shop, another aperitivo, which is prosecco, with cheese platter, with this kind of thing. Delicious, simple. When it's time to pay, also the other owner. If Father is with you, it's free. My brother Luciano doesn't go to mass very often. He enjoyed two aperitivis on a row. And he looked at me and he said, where do you buy this kind of things? Where do you buy this kind of things? It was August. I was in the hub in one of our parishes in Genoa, Ventimiglia. And I, I reached there by train. And the parish priest, Italian, inside the church on Sunday, short pants and t-shirt. So I back. He was fixing the things with these legs, with a lot of black hair. <laughs> it looks like an orangutan. <laughs> and I entered like this. And I said, Father Laman, it's Sunday. He said, yeah, and my name is there somewhere. Well, you should see how hard it is in the Philippines. Anyway, after the Mass, he offered me again a peritivo. <laughs> There's a good tradition there. So we walked from the church to the coffee shop, another meters, me wearing my black cassock. And he short pants, t-shirt, and so on. <laughs> it's a frontier with France. There was a huge truck, trailer truck, coming. When they saw me, they stopped the truck. Then the two drivers came down. They went straight against me. I thought they would punch my face. I said, I'm willing to die martyr. <laughs> and they said, are you a Catholic priest? I said, yes. I was about to say, I'm willing to die. <laughs> Lord, you must bless us. Everything is going wrong in our life. We are sick and the truck doesn't work well and my wife and my children inside on the sidewalk and people around were taking video and pictures. So I made the blessing in Latin. You know, auditorium nostrum, benedicat vos omnipotent Deus, Father et Filius, Spiritus out. And they were so happy. And then I said to the other priest, did you see? It's not that more handsome than you. <laughs> but better here than you. Simply because of the castle. So in the Novus Ordo, first of all, they remove the dress of the priest. They remove the manicure. They remove <clears throat> Latin. They remove the Gregorian, except for some exception at the back. They remove the prayer before the altar. They remove the double confiteor. They remove the triple kerialation. They remove the sequence of epistle and gospel. They remove the offertory. They change the canon with a dozen of Eucharistic prayers. They remove communion, kneeling, and on the tongue. They remove the second gospel. They remove the cross from the altar and the two candles. Do you know the only thing that the Novus Ordo did not remove from the Vetus, this one. The basket for the collection. <laughs> this basket 
is really ecumenical. <laughs> it's equally accepted in the Vetus and in the Novus Ordo. Of the things a collection, one in Latin, one in English, one in Tagalog, Thailand, I'm not going to talk about it. So, to conclude, because we need to conclude. Are you recording? To conclude, what is the status of this Misa now and for all eternity up to the second coming of our Lord? First, first, Vetus Ordo Missa, Vetus, not just B, Vetus, B, O, N, Vetus, Ordo, Ordo, O, O. Was never abolished. That is the first thing we must put in our mind. Never a Pope said, either by abolish the Vetus Ordo Missa. For the six, never abolish the Vetus Ortois. John Paul II confirmed that it was never abolished. <laughs> Benedict XVI, he says something even more beautiful. He said, what has been considered sacred for 2,000 years cannot be abolished or considered sinful. How can you consider sinful the most sacred book of Christianity after the Bible. And even Pope Francis, in his much beloved document, Traditionis Custodes, he indirectly confirmed that this Missa has never been abolished. Second point. PM. PM means Miss Private Mass. Any Catholic priest, by virtue of the sacrament of ordination, in his private mass, may use any missal whatsoever which has not been abolished. So when I was on vacation, and I own private masses because there is my friend priest, he's already 89 years old, so I was free to, to say the Novus Ordo in Latin, Italian, English, or Tagalog, or the Vetus Ordo because it's my private mass. And I want to share something. My brother-in-law, the last time he went to mass was for his first Holy Communion. And the, the wedding, and the wedding. But now, in the past two years, he's not attending the Sunday Mass. He's attending the daily Mass. Daily. The whole town is surprised. John Meiji, John Meiji, John Meiji attending the daily Mass with my sister. And so they, they were shocked. And they said, oh, we see that all of a sudden, you decided to attend the Mass. No, don't attend the Mass. He's always talking about prayer, religion, gospel, theology. Two years ago, I celebrated the Latin Mass, the TLM, in this small chapel, private Mass. And my sister attended. My brother-in-law, against his will, he has to sit at the back of the church with short pants and attend unwillingly the TLM. At the end of the Mass, came in the sacrist and he said, if I had knew that all the masses were like this, I will go there every day. And from that moment, every day he attends the mass. It's not because of me, it's because of the TLM. Can you believe that? And so, private masses we can celebrate using the Misa that we prefer. So all these documents of uh, jump, John Paul II, Ecclesia Dei, uh, Benedict XVI, Sumorum Pontifico, and Pope Francis, Tradiciones Custodes, do not concern private masses, but they concern 
public masses. So of course, if you want to say the public mass okay, in the parish and the public oratory, which is scheduled and which is announced and broadcasted, everybody. So we need the permission of the bishop and of the parish priest. Third and last, Catholics, by virtue of baptism, may attend any public or private mass as they wish. So every morning there is a mass in the convent of the Reparatic Sister, 6 a.m. You have the right to know. I, want, I wish to attend the Mass. It's a private Mass of the Convent of the Sister. I am a Catholic. Show me your baptism certificate. Ta! And they cannot stop me from attending the Mass. It's the right of a Catholic. The only reason why a Catholic should be prohibited from attending the Mass is because he is excommunicated. Are you? So to finish, and now we give uh, the microphone possible questions. Let's go make it short on the question. Um, this is the conclusion. We should really give thanks to God that for 2,000 years, the authentic <laughs> canon, possibly going back to the, to the apostle, and the language, and the Eucharistic prayer, and the Misa was preserved. One more thing I forgot to tell you a while ago. In the year 200, Something happened. The changing from Greek to Latin. Because, of course, Jesus was speaking in Aramaic and the reading in Hebrew. You know, the, Jesus was reading in Hebrew but talking in Aramaic. And the first masses obviously were celebrated in Aramaic and Hebrew. But as the number of non Jews entered the church with St. Paul, they couldn't speak a word in Hebrew, so the church said, we have to change into Greek, because the common language before was Greek. In the year 200, the first pope, he said, people don't speak Greek anymore, we need to shift to Latin. So in the year 200, from Greek to Latin, and thereafter it has remained the official language of the church. What are the words in Hebrew still in the Roman Missal? No, no. Amen and Alleluia. So, Amen and Alleluia, it's Hebrew. Amen. Amen or Amen, whatever. I prefer Amen. And what are the only Greek words that have remained in the Misa? Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison. So these were not translated. So when they <coughs> translated into Latin, they preserved Amen, Alleluia from the Hebrew, and they preserved Kyrie eleison from the Greek. Marami kong salamat sa inyo na. Everything clear? No questions? Any questions? Yes? One question in the back. Okay, thank you. So, um, let's answer the whole question from the beginning, because it, it involved a lot of things. 
faith. By the virtue of faith, I must submit my intellect and will to the revelation of God. Revelation, sa madaling salita, is the Bible. And the tradition up to 100 AD. 100 AD, the death of St. John the Beloved. So when St. John the Beloved died, Revelation ended. I'm talking of public revelation. So when, when I say, I am a Christian Catholic, I believe, what do you believe? This, the revelation. From that moment onward, there will be no more public revelation. Even, even angels, archangels, comes down from heaven, tell us, doesn't really matter. Revelation ended here, with the death of Saint John the Beloved. Punto. Now, the church, the Pope, has two kinds of magisterium. Magisterium. One is ordinary, the other is extraordinary. Ordinary means how many commentaries about revelation. Extraordinary declaration of dogmas. Dogmas. Ano bang dogma? In Tagalog, ina ng aso. Dog. The dogma are defined, when the Pope defines the dogma, he says, ex cathedra, de fide et moribus. Wow. Or, he attached to the declaration of the dogma, the anathema, anathema si. So to say, anathema si, or the fide et moribus cathedra, is equivalent. Okay. Attention. When a pope declares a dogma, he's not inventing anything. He simply say this dogma, it's already included here <clears throat> implicitly, and now I will explain to you explicitly. For example, the Immaculate Conception, it was declared in 1854. <clears throat> 1854. So does it mean that Pius IX invented a new dogma? No. This dogma was already included in the Revelation chapter 2 of St. Chapter 1 of St. Luke. Hail Mary, full of grace, que careto mene. Un que careto mene, na pupuno ng gracia, que walang kasalanan, walang kasalanan, aqual sin, at walang kasalanan mana. Kaya, this dogma was already included here. So, kapag sa papal document is written, ex fide ex moribus, or anathema sin, it's a dogmatic declaration. De fide et moribus. Now we have a problem. The missal is not strictly speaking de fide et moribus, but it is de liturgia, the missal. It's about liturgical tradition. So it's not this anathema is not as powerful as denying the Immaculate Conception. But it's something very close to it. So we may say that the, the wrath of God, this is the wrath of God, is something in between ordinary and extraordinary. It's somewhere there. Very close. So to change the Misa is really something that deserves the wrath of God, according to Pius V, which somehow, with which of course, we accept. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, another one? Okay. Uh, Father, one question about the Sabbath. Because the, the time of Jesus, they, know they, said they celebrate Sabbath Friday night and the Saturday night. When was Sabbath changed to Sunday? Right, uh, yes. Christians were immediately excommunicated from the synagogue of the Jews. So for the first weeks, 
after the ascension of Jesus and the Pentecost. For a few weeks, they were worshiping in the temple, but after, I think, less than a year, they were excommunicated. So they could not longer worship in the temple, in the synagogues. Okay, fine. So they began celebrating the Mass on Sunday, which is the day of the Lord. Usually, nagsimula sa Sabado ng Gabi, a long vigil, and then on the dawn of Sunday, they will celebrate the Mass. So it began almost immediately. There is a document of St. Justin, date 160, in which it says, on the day of the Lord, Sunday, we gather for the Eucharist. So virtually, from the very beginning, they shifted from Sabbath, which is the feast of the Jews celebrating creation, to Sunday, which is the feast of the Christian celebrating resurrection. Oh, mga seminarista, saan na kayo? Wala pa kayong tanong? <laughs> of course. Tinlag, malakas at bilis. Sige. Then we have trivia. We have trivia with prices. Good morning, Father. Good morning. So, one of our professors taught us one of the reasons why we have Sanctum Concilium that back to the vernacular language which Jesus Christ during the Last Supper also, which he used the language of Aramaic. And what could be your insight about this argument that using the Latin language is is that we are using the language also that kills Jesus? Yes, thank you. So, the Latin language is a dead language. And this is a blessing because the meaning of the words do not change. The vernacular languages have this big problem. What meant something 30 years ago now has completely changed. In Latin, the meaning is forever. For example, if, if I say, we have a beautiful speaker, we have a beautiful speaker. What does it mean? It could refer to this. This is a speaker. It's beautiful. Yamaha costs 45,000 pesos. Bought with the offering of TLM. But it could refer to the speaker. But considering the reality, definitely it refers to that. So you see the same word is so equivocal because the meaning changes. A speaker can be an amplifier of sound or a man who talks. In Latin, there is no such a danger. That's why Latin has been consecrated as the official language of the Catholic Church for the liturgy, for the dogmatic definition, and also for the documents. All the documents issued by the Church were written in Latin, even up to the present. Even Sacrosanctum Concilium was written in Latin. It was only this Pope which we love, that he began writing in Spanish. <laughs> hey, Castilla, caramba, in Spanish. I hope he will not write in Italian because he makes a lot of mistakes when he speaks in Italian. So, so why is not using English, uh, Latin? <laughs> there are so many translators there now, they are jobless because. So the, the official language of the Catholic Church for 1,000, 800 years has been Latin and for a reason. The reason is to preserve the liturgy and to preserve our dogmas without the danger of changing with the changing of the vernacular languages. Pasado. Yes, yes. Okay, yes John. Question. And then, then we have three, you know? Three more questions and then we start with three or else you will get bored. Yes. Why is it a big deal to insert the name of St. Joseph in the hand? Aside from the change, the image. Can you look for the camera? Here, the dike. The dike. All the trillion of gallons of water. If you drill a small hole in a dike, it many. It seems a small matter, no? But because of the pressure from the water, that hole becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until at the moment the whole dike comes down. 
Now the big issue. Yeah. Etna, comunicante, sembra brillante, ma... Se è beati Yosef, e usted vi è ci risponsi. Ok. Para malitna vaga, e... Nobody listen to this, because only the priest is whispering the name. Thank you. But he gave a clear signal. The canon, which is 2,000 years old, can be changed. See the point? can be changed without being excommunicated. That was the, the point. Look now how many canons we have. <laughs> In the Novus Ordo we have canon number one, canon number two, canon number three, canon number four. Mass for the children, mass for the elderly, mass for the youth, mass for the handicapped, mass for the, the LGBT, mass There are now almost six or seven canons, and the original canon has been lost because of that small little hole. So, it's not the sin of Saint Joseph, but it's the point that the Pope dared to change the sacred canon the first time after at least 1,600 years but most probably from the very time of the Apostle. How do we know that the canon is from the time early century? Because all the saints in the canon are martyrs of the Roman persecution. There is no saint after the Edict of Milan, Latnam Santo, Euthanasia, Saint Eugenia, San They're all martyrs of the first three centuries. So never a pope in history dare to touch the sacred canon except Chan the 23rd, and they took the advantage of that in the council and said, if the Pope was able to change the canon, why can we not change from Latin to English, from Gregorian to this, from this to that? So it was the, we say in Latin, casum belli, the small thing that triggered a huge explosion. Okay, two more questions, then we start with the trivia. Yes, dear. Uh, Father, good morning. My name is Patrick. I just have a question. So, uh, what was going on right now with the church, especially uh, the declining vocations, the declining the belief, the daily presence? Why is Rome not just simply just restoring everything back into its original place? Eh, <laughs> I will strongly suggest you to go to Rome, <laughs> to knock at the door of Santa Marta, and ask the questions. <laughs> That is the, thank you, thank you. That is exactly the point. Okay, let's put aside for a moment, a moment the Philippines and other few countries like in Africa, the lot of vocation. The congregations and the diocese that they restore the TLM with all that comes with the priest with the lare, the bravery, and the women going to mass wearing dress and not leggings, and putting a veil, and not a wig. <laughs> Seminaries are again full of vocations. I was checking the seminary of, aside from the SSPX, even the one of the Fraternity of St. Peter, the Christ, the King, and they're full of vocations. While other seminaries are empty. So, in Rome there is a church, <coughs> Santa Maria dei Pellegrini, della Trinità dei Pellegrini, which is beside our general chapter house. And during the general chapter I used to visit. Last Sunday, a journalist, Maria Valli, he went, the mass is at eight in the morning of Sunday. He wanted to enter in this big church where the TLM was celebrated. He could not. There were so many people, he could not enter, so he said, the church beside, same size, 12 people, including the two sacristans. See the point? So it's really important, especially for the future generation of priests. Okay, we celebrate the Novus Ordo because we are children of the Novus Ordo, but we must really rediscover 
the way to sort of, like what we do here, Sunday, 9 o'clock, way to sort of. 11 o'clock, no to sort of. And this goes on both masses, <laughs> without being changed. One more question, then we go, yes. Good morning, Paul. Uh, I'm Otan. Father, so uh, with the changes, uh, can we say that uh, from the Vitus Ordo to, to Novus Ordo, uh, would it make it invalid, Mass? Or if not, what are the things that make the Mass invalid? Oh, I think the seminarians, they memorize it because they keep on repeating over and over again. Essential elements of the mass for the validity. There are only three. One, two, three. A mass is valid if the minister is a validly ordained priest. So if a priest was validly ordained, his ordination is valid, he celebrates the mass, the mass is valid. Even if you celebrate Mass in the beach with shorts, it's still valid. The matter, bread of wheat and wine from grapes. As long as the Mass is being celebrated with bread of wheat, we are here the, the sister of crucified, they make the host, they take flour from UK or New Zealand, because if it is from China, the mass will be invalid. <laughs> and they mix with water, counting powies, and then the ostia. The ostia. And the wine is from the grapes. You know, here in the seminary, there is an inverted Eucharistic miracle every week. Mm. Inverted. Kasi sa simbahan namin, maraming misa, isang bote ng mompo, tumatagal na isang buwan. Imagine, it's just one liter. It lasts over a month. But here in the seminary, we only have one mass a day. The battle of Mompo doesn't reach one week. I wonder, it's an inverted Eucharistic miracle. I wonder why Mompo is evaporating so fast in the seminary. Do you have any idea? No. One time I got a seminarian, I said, you know, when they bring back the cruets, <laughs> I got him, ah, Monica! Father, I am practicing for when I will be a priest. <laughs> Master in Padusology. <laughs> and form. <clears throat> the form is Oc est in corpus meum or in any language. This is my body. What about this is my blood? Well, if there is also this is my blood, all the more. But in the moment the valid priest over the valid matter says, this is my body, that matter becomes the body, the blood, the humanity and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, as long as these three are present, the Mass is valid. Kaya anobus or the Mass is Valid. Okay, Tamara, because they, they may throw stones at me now. Okay, thank you very much. Let us now have a trivia. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Okay.